Now it's the part of the show where I book the guest and you ask the questions. This week, I managed to snag comedy musical genius Tim Minchin. Tim Minchin is a comedian, actor, writer and musician who stormed onto the UK comedy scene in 2005, winning Best Newcomer at the Edinburgh Festival. Morning, you ginger, you call another ginger, ginger. He then went on to co-write the smash hit musical Matilda and followed it up with the Tony Award winning Groundhog Day, before returning to TV with his acclaimed drama series Upright. And now he's taken his musical talents further with the release of his debut album, Apart Together. Hello, mate. Hi. What a lovely smile. Thanks. They're fake. They look great. Well, you know, I mean, they should look great. I should say, I watched them um, upright during the lockdown. Oh, did you? It's absolutely brilliant. You know, tortured artist traveling across Australia. Yeah. Tick, tick, tick. It was brilliant. Yeah. Really great, man. Thank you, mate. I, uh, I have to admit, I, I like it. Yeah. You know, you don't always like what you make, do you? But I like that one. I'm glad you watched it. It feels like the sort of thing you might like. Oh, yeah, it was bang. So, A smart young man like you. Now, we're going to go straight to the questions from the, from the audience. Um, this is from Sean. With the success of Matilda, are there other stories you'd like to adapt to a musical? Oh, yeah. I mean, I, I, I've got ideas for new ones. Um, uh, I don't know if in the near future I'll do another family thing. Mm. I mean, it, when, when you're lucky enough to have got involved in something like Matilda, you, you sort of, you've got two choices. One is you pursue it again, or you just go, okay, done that. Yeah, I'll right. never again try and write a family musical because it will never be as fun to make. Right. It'll never be as successful. Mm. Uh, it won't be as loved and it can only be a disappointment. And anyway, I'm inclined to always try and push forward. Um, uh, you know, I want Groundhog Day back on the West End. Maybe in this post-COVID uh, reopening we'll get Groundhog Day back. It just sort of got stuck in the Broadway hellscape mm. and uh, never quite got back to the West End. Having won the Olivier, you know, it's crazy. So get Groundhog Day back on the West End and then we'll talk new musicals. Nice. You've written, you've actually written a, a straight musical album called Apart Together. Yeah. What inspired that? Well, Apart Together is a pre-COVID title and it's the title of one of the songs on the album. Mm. Um, and it's and, and the chorus of that goes, um, I think this could last forever, girl, let's fall apart together. Because it's about how when you commit to someone long term, you're really committing to watching each other decay. <laughs> it's, a, it's, a, it's a song of love and entropy. And then COVID hit and the whole album, it's really interesting how you make a body of work and then you change the environment in which it's going to be observed and that changes the work. It's like the observer effect in anthropology or whatever. It's like the whole album sounds different now and uh, hopefully it'll bring people joy of some sort, maybe a little bit of a tear or a... Uh, some some sense of commonality. You know? Yeah, yeah. And there's a song on your album called Airport Piano. Did you write that at an airport piano? I did not. No. Okay. What's the <laughs> What's the song about? I mean, it's, it it claims it goes. I wrote the song on an airport piano. I was a girl. <laughs> so I claim to have written it on an airport piano. Yeah. It's a It's a massive <laughs> yeah. midlife crisis. Basically, the chorus goes. Women in SUV Porsches always look miserable. I don't know why they're so sad. Maybe it's the calories they could have had. Filling them up with regret and men in mansions on cold de sacs. Having their midlife affairs with the wife of a banker. And the banker is banging Bianca. But sadly, they're still gonna die. Very nice, very nice. Um, and we, it's, it's one of the funkier ones. Is that, presumably that's written from the point of view, just, just oceans of hours in airports, just watching and seeing different people drift over you? I think they're interesting places to bounce mm. off from to talk about time passing and transition and being away. And, and also I have landed in so firmly in the middle class, you know, or whatever that word is. Mm. I've, I've been lucky enough to live on a street where there's a lot of bankers and real estate agents and stuff and I just 
that, you know, money doesn't buy you happiness thing. And I've been to Hollywood and I've met like the people, you know, mm. and it's such a cliche, but I, it just, they're just not happy. Mm. Rich people are not happy. And I've met enough now to, you can't say to someone struggling for money, oh, wealth doesn't buy you happiness. But I do think there's a way to observe that, that just comments on our desire for more and more mm. and more and the ever receding goal of acquisition and achievement. Mm. And, you know, that's something then when you get to my age, you start thinking about what the hell you're doing. Well, exactly, my friend. Right, let's have a video question. Given that this period has felt like Groundhog Day for so many people, I was wondering if you had to choose a day of your life to relive over and over again, is there a particular day that you would choose and why? Do you have one, Russell? I, uh, not this to is sound a favourite day. Not to sound clichéd, but I really enjoyed my wedding day. It felt like the happiness you get from comedy felt a bit like I'd been sniffing glue for 20 years and then I had a big fat shot of of, of heroin, some proper, you know what I mean? It was just really, yeah. like, it was a very clear, calm happiness. How about you? Um, yeah, I don't know. I don't know, I don't know. I mean, see, my this is why I'm a slightly annoying person because that's a great question, except my brain goes, ah, oh, well, this is a good reason to talk about the hedonic treadmill because this is the thing with uh, what I was talking about in airport piano. The reason uh, wealthy people aren't happy is because uh, we have this thing called hedonic regression, hedonic as in happiness. And so it doesn't matter how happy you get, it, it becomes your new zero. And to an extent, even when things are bad, you have a new zero. So um, you, you could live your wedding day over and over again mm. and it would very quickly become completely boring mm. because it will be your new zero. And you're having snorted the heroin of marriage, you would need to inject into your eyeballs the LSD of something else. Yeah. You know? So repetition, as we found in Groundhog Day, uh, is, is never fun. This is true. We've got a little question here from Rachel that says, change the tone, what's your favourite type of cheese? See, this is the thing, Russell, you can't have a favourite. That's like asking me what my favourite child is. Although <laughs> I actually, I, I know that one. But <laughs> I can do my kids if I can't do cheeses. I mean, at one end there's a nice crumbly old cheddar and at the other end a kind of really gooey blue Costello or something. It depends on the cracker. I, I, I will not be reductive about it. <laughs> I won't be forced <laughs> in, into a situation where I play favourites with cheeses. I think that's why, one of the reasons why we, we're struggling with uh, political leadership around the world. We have such abundant choice in areas such as cheese. <laughs> and it feels like yeah. in politics you can have this... Or this. Yeah, and you're like, where are the subtle in-between? Where's the stinking bishop in on my voting card? Exactly. We've got another lovely video question. Let's have a look at that. What song of yours have you had the most fun with either writing or performing? To be honest, I have a song called Cheese, for those audience members who don't know that, why I get asked about cheese so much. And uh, the, the cheese song is like a rhapsody. It's got three movements or four movements and it goes for like seven or eight minutes. It is a deeply complex, <laughs> uh, profoundly metaphorical and extremely fun and stupid, stupid, stupid piece of music. C I played cheese with the 55-piece Heritage Symphony <laughs> Orchestra at the Royal Albert Hall. Yeah. And I had a cracking, I played a cracking solo and I thought, I'm done. Yeah. I finished, I finished com musical comedy has now ended for me because I just played an eight-minute cheese song at the Royal Albert Hall in the orchestra. That's what I love about you, that, that you're both incredibly intelligent and utterly fucking stupid at the same time. Do you know what I mean? It's just <laughs> like, but the, it's the way that you talk with such depth there about a song about cheese and you really mean it. That's what's so wonderful, you know what I mean? Oh, no, I take it, I take it all very, very seriously. Yeah, yeah. Let's have another question. Hi, Russell. Hi, Tim. 
just wanted to know how Tim became the beautiful bastard he is today. <laughs> well, there you go. Oh my That's God. a lovely question. Uh, how did you become... Break down how Tim Minchin became the beautiful bastard he is today. Um, I just think I'm just blessed, you know? It's just <laughs> facial structure. I've got beautiful olive skin. I'm <laughs> tall and thin. I just, you know, some people are hot and I'm hot. What can you do? <laughs> you never see that in men's health, do you? Just somebody like The Rock, like, I'm just, I'm just all right. Do you know what I mean? This one, I'm just beautiful. This will never happen God, How beautiful is The Rock? Yeah, yeah. he's, he's, a, he's a ridiculously so handsome man, isn't he? So we've got another question here from Michelle. I've been a huge fan for years, and one of the things I love about your music is that it resonates with so many fundamental emotions and the questions we all face. My question is, what does music or art do for you? I, I read a lot more books than I do. I don't really watch much telly and I don't really listen to much music, to be honest. So it's really? not something I'm proud of. I try to ch change both those things. But I, I do find music a bit stressful, particularly. Wow. So you find, but, um, but isn't that, I find that fascinating, that you find music stressful. Well, because either, either people are going... I think, oh, well, great. You've written a song with the four most used chords in the entire planet. Well, right. well we can all do that. <laughs> Why are you selling us squillion records, right. you bastard? <laughs> right. Or someone's going... <laughs> and I'm like, ah, oh, I want to be able to do that. <laughs> bastard. Wow. OK, well, that complete... It's a, it's a perfect answer to the question. So you know so much about the art that you can't enjoy it. Well, I... I do enjoy it, I do. And I, I just, I keep waiting to be old enough and mature enough to get into classical music, but I find it too dynamic to, you know, there's a lot going on. <laughs> this, is a, this is a change, in, a change in direction here from Jen, who says, what do you think of my rabbits? Oh. The one on the left is called Kirby, the one on the right is called Netta and is female. What do you think of her rabbits? <laughs> They're really hot rabbits. <laughs> I haven't felt so flustered by a rabbit since Jessica. Oh yeah, that that I mean she'd have been right in your uh, in your time frame for curious thoughts. Yeah, when she... my com my coming of age. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Uh, yeah, you have hot rabbits. They are really good looking rabbits. <laughs> nice. Um they're going to die and you're going to mourn. Not them. now, Tim. Jesus. Now, M Magnus uh, Magnus Loseth Magnuson, great name, says, how do you cope with nervousness? Well, um, I have a poo. Yep. Um, and a wine. Yep. <laughs> and then I'm still nervous and I just get on stage anyway. It's funny, um, it's funny because every performer I know has the pre-gig poo. It's the, it's the thing... That... I have a song about it. Oh, really? Yeah. I've never... <laughs> Pre-show poo, pre-show poo, just can't do without my pre-show poo. Um, do you think Beyonce has a pre-show poo? Oh, without a doubt, Beyonce. Imagine being Beyonce. I reckon she has two. Yeah, but she... There's... Two pre-show poos, <laughs> two pre-show <laughs> um, Right, we got one last video question. Let's have that. Hello, Tim. My question for you is, if you had to write a song about 2020 and all the shenanigans that have happened, what would the tagline of the chorus be? I just love how English calling 2020 <laughs> full of shenanigans. I think it would be, uh, I would, it would be aspirational. Every now and then I think about February next year, Trump isn't in the White House anymore. It's so ridiculous, but that would make such a big difference mm. to the planets. Yeah. To a lot of the planets' mm. uh, mood. And, um, and if along, you know, close behind it comes a bit of a vaccine with uh, some of the arts back online. It'd feel like that first day after you've had a terrible flu where you go for a walk in the sunshine, wouldn't it? Mm, yeah, yeah, to the future, man. I can't wait for that. Tim, that was fantastic. Thank you so much for, uh, for coming on the show. Thanks, Russell. Bye, everyone. See you later, mate. Bye, my frickin' record. <laughs> <laughs> Lovely stuff.